And then Proverbs 21 and in verse 25, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So if we want to have financial peace, then we must be sure that we're not wasteful of the money that God has blessed us to work hard for. Be sure you download the note card that goes along with this sermon, and you can print it out, and you can follow along, fill it in as you follow the sermon. If you like this sermon, want to see more like this, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, also hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when other new content is added to this site. We try to add sermons as often as we can. We'll try to add some Bible question and answers that we've done before in the past. Other things we may be adding to this. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to follow us on social media, there are links to our social media accounts in the video description below. Now, let's jump into the sermon. We present another lesson in our daily Bible reading for 2013, looking at the Old Testament wisdom literature. We started looking in Proverbs last lesson. We looked at reading Proverbs, what's involved in reading Proverbs. And in this lesson, we kind of want to take a topic that is kind of near and dear to all of us, and that is look at what Proverbs says about money matters. So with that, we chose as our reading today from God's Word, Proverbs chapter 3 and in verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3, drop down, if you will, verse 1. I hope all of you have your Bibles to follow along. If not... Look at what's on the slide. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. Reading from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. I want to look in this lesson at four ways to find financial peace as talked about in the book of Proverbs from Solomon the wisest man, I believe, to ever live. The first thing we find in our text, looking at verse 4 of Proverbs chapter 13, we learn work hard is what we're told in that passage of Scripture. We're told there in verse 4, some, uh, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and men is what we want to happen. And that proverb tells us in chapter 3 and in verse 4. But Proverbs chapter 13, as we have on the screen, Proverbs chapter 13 there, and in verse 4 says, The soul of a sluggard 
desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. So we must work hard. Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 23, he said, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. Disciples are expected by God to be hard workers in whatever it is that they do. And our Lord expects this for a multitude of reasons. One such reason is those who work hard set themselves up for success in their character. It also gives them a chance to be blessed in their wealth as well, because we all know that money doesn't grow on trees in a garden or in a flower bed. And so this is exactly what Paul or what Solomon means when he writes in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4, that we saw that the soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the soul of the delight is made fat. Everyone has needs and craves things. But Solomon says that the sluggard or lazy person will get nothing because they do not put in the work to obtain what they need. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 20, he said, a faithful man will abound with blessings, but whoever hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. Put this together with what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. For even when we were with you, he said, we would give you this commandment. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. So laziness is not to be rewarded. Too many people would rather look for a handout then put their nose to the grindstone and work hard for their compensation. I know a lot of people call that a hand up. And there may be a case we need to give people a hand up, but a lot of people just want handouts and expect nothing in return. And that is a sad condition of life in today's world. Too many would rather settle for a get-rich scheme or resort to fraud than be diligent in their work to become wealthy and blessed materially. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4, a slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. And in chapter 13, verse 11, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase. So it's true that there are many people who have financial reasons for many different issues. And if that is where we find ourselves, then we need to first ask whether or not we are actually working hard enough to earn money that will keep us out of financial trouble. If we think that we are working hard, but we still have issues, then it might be that we are making a different mistake that Solomon also addresses in the book of Proverbs. And again, exactly what he means when he says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 4, the soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing. So don't be wasteful is a, sec a second thing of these four to find financial peace. Proverbs chapter 21, and in verse 20, he says, There is a precious treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man, he says, swallows it up. Precious treasure, he talks about there. Those who are wise use that wisdom to make sure that they have what they need. And in Versely, the foolish person gives no thought to his needs or the future and swallows up and wastes everything that he has. Often the ability to not be wasteful with your wealth comes with maturity. I get it. I remember after I left home, might have been while I was at home, the first paycheck I earned 
was at a radio station, working at a radio station, uh, working late shift about eight to midnight. And I couldn't want, uh, you know, I couldn't want to get out and buy something cool with it, which my immaturity at the time often led me to wasting my hard earned money. And when I actually needed it for something, it wasn't there. And so that's, we had to be careful. In Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 7, said there is one who pretends to be rich but has nothing. Another pretends to be pure, poor but has great wealth. This proverb fits really well and is more than likely the inspiration for a well-known saying when it comes to striving for financial peace, to live below your means now so you can live above your means later on. And in Proverbs 21, and in verse 25, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So if we want to have financial peace, then we must be sure that we're not wasteful of the money that God has blessed us to work hard for. And then another thing I've always been told, and it's, and it's definitely hard to do, it's easier said than told a lot of times, and that is to keep a budget. Proverbs chapter 27, and in verse 23, tells us, be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herd. So know the state that you're in with your money. Proverbs 27 and 23 tells us. The wise man not just knows what wealth he has, but he knows when and where it goes. He's aware of his finances and isn't allowing himself to be in a tough spot by his carelessness. One of the easiest ways to be aware of our money, where it goes, of course, is to make out a budget. And seems like always things always come up to bust a budget, don't they? But at least we try to make a budget. Budgets vary far and wide. My budget may very well look different from your budget, but there are some things that remain consistent. First, we must, we just need to put forth the effort to have a budget. And so that we are aware of our financial status. And this is something that I believe we need to give a lot of effort to, a lot more, I believe, than a lot of us certainly do. And so one of the ways we can plan to keep from wasting money is to give attention and know where the money is going. Proverbs 27, verse 23, know well the condition of your flocks, pay attention to your herds. Say so he tells us, budgets vary again far and wide. All of our budget ought to begin with God in mind. Each of us has the responsibility to contribute to the work of the local church that we have become members of. We've joined ourselves to. First Corinthians. Chapter 16, verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints as I directed the churches of Galatia, so you also do on the first day of the week, each of you is to put something aside and store it up so that as he may prosper so that there be no collection when I come, the Apostle Paul says. And then Proverbs 3 and verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. And so we need to put God at the top of our budget and then work from there. Our contribution to the church ought to be the central part of our financial plan and not just the leftover. And then avoid unnecessary debt. That's hard to do sometimes, I realize hard lesson. And I know, I guess you could say, physician, heal yourself when you say this, and a lot of times that's true. We come to have a strong sense of financial peace 
and stability if we do everything within our power to avoid unnecessary debt. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower becomes the lender's slave. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. When we are in debt to another, then in essence we are their slave, and any inability to repay that debt or loan will only lead to trouble in our life. Now here's the deal with this thought. I know that some, such as Dave Ramsey, will hold that we should never have any debt ever type of mentality. And while I would love to hold this idea, the reality is that our culture and society really make this difficult, if not nearly impossible. If we aren't in the wealthiest of brackets of people, the truth is that there are things in this life that almost require or demand that we take out loans. Things such as houses, cars, education, and such are very difficult to come by if we want to pay cash for everything. So if we acknowledge this as the case, then what, we can, uh, what, what can we do to handle necessary debt well or avoid unnecessary debt altogether? Again, Proverbs 22 and in verse 7, we call to mind. We begin with the unnecessary debt. If we can avoid this by doing what we mentioned earlier and living within our means, this means that we don't apply for and use credit and accrue debt and interest and do so without any plans of paying our debt in a timely manner. And so Proverbs 22, 7 is directed to warn us against this. It also means that we're realistic about what we can afford with what we make. For example, if we make $50,000 a year, then we shouldn't be going out and buying a $3 million home. We might not be able to afford that. I, don't, I really don't know what homes run around here. I remember one time used to seeing those kind of prices in Illinois. Coming to Arkansas, seeing a three-bedroom home going for $29,000. I was just really amazed by that because everything I saw was anywhere from two to $3 million. Rents extremely uh, exorbitant. I paid exorbitant rents before. It's, it's tough in those conditions. But it's tough to make it when you have to pay those kind of rents if you're not making enough to do that. So we must be wise and avoid these very unavoidable or these very avoidable issues of unnecessary debt. But on the other hand, we can learn to handle that necessary debt well, and we can do so by doing exactly what we've talked about thus far. We can handle that house, that car, that school, or maybe unnecessary debt that we make a mistake of accruing by working hard, saving, and being disciplined on a budget. We can avoid or overcome by practicing these things. So it would be nice if we all knew this stuff up front in our youth, wouldn't it? Because it can keep us from making poor decisions. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 13, uh, 15 tells us there about the fool and making Bad decisions, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. That's what we must do. There's no shame in seeking out help, but there is much shame and pride allowing us to get to a place where we become a burden to others. May we be the humble type when we are in need of help so that others might help us to find financial peace by putting into practice these godly Thanks. So may we take the words of Solomon to heart concerning money matters when he says, My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof, for who the Lord loves, he reproves even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11. He says, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproving. The Lord delights in us. He wants what is best for us. And may we humble ourselves to consider these four ways in which 
we can avoid much of the trouble that the world endures by finding financial peace through what's written in the book of Proverbs. With that, Bob Jarrell. Now the question in the Bible, the Philippian jailer asked, we talked about, what must I do to be saved? And of course it starts with hearing the gospel. Walter Scott back in the restoration period had a, talked about the plan of salvation by using his hand and he would teach the children and tell them go home and teach your parents. And it would start out with hear the gospel, Romans chapter eight, verse 11. The seed is the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing through the word of God. And then we know that the next step is to believe. John 8, 24, Jesus said, I told you you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. We learn in Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith it's impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. And then as we spoke in our earlier lesson, we must repent. Luke chapter 13, 3, I tell you, no, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. He says, verse 4, are those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them? Only place we learn about this in the Bible right here. People, God bless their soul, that were killed when the tower of Siloam fell. Do you think that they were worse offender than all others who lived in Jerusalem? They go to meet their eternity pretty fast. Jesus said, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. If they haven't repented, their destination is hell itself. And then, of course, Acts chapter 17, verse 30, the time of this ignorance God overlooked now commands all men everywhere to repent. And then we learn that we must confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God. We learn in Romans 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 9, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father who's in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, he said, I also will deny him before my Father who is in heaven. And then the Bible, yes, teaches we are to be baptized for the remission of our sins, Acts 2.38. Saul of Tarsus was told, look at the order now. Why do you wait? Rise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. The denominational world has this backwards. They say you call on the Lord in prayer, then you're you wash away your sins in calling on the Lord in prayer. And then you're baptized to show that you now been saved. And then you rise and go on to do what you're going to do. Exact backwards to what the Bible says here. Why do you wait? Rise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. I'll take the Bible order every time. The order that the Bible puts it. 1 Peter 3.21, baptism corresponds to this. It now saves you, not as removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then that's not the end of it. We must endure to the end. Hebrews 4.11, let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. And we learn in Colossians chapter 1 and in verse 23, if indeed you continue in the faith, that's what we're to do, stable, steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, uh, and of which I, Paul, he said, have become a minister. Bob Jerome. Now, thank you for joining us today for this lesson. Be sure you download the note card that we have in the description below. 
tell others about this, this channel, have them subscribe, ask them to subscribe. Uh, we can be found also the archives on rumble.com. Our username there is capital SPH, lowercase church. You can find all the archives there if they happen to not be on YouTube or Facebook. We're also on Facebook at Spring Hill Church of Christ. You can find us there. Our Bible study is at 9.35 a.m. where we study the Bible, not just about the Bible. Sunday morning worship service at 10.45 a.m. Then our pre-evening. Evening occurs at 6 p.m. Always has, I guess. Ours is before evening, so we call it pre-evening at 4 p.m. Wednesday evening Bible study, 6.30 p.m. Come join us in person or watch us online. Go to the website, michaelrhughes.com. And we do have both the audio and the video now available on that site. Audios are available on 10 audio podcast site, including Apple, also uh, Google Play, and Spotify, and there's just too many to name, but you can go look and find us at capital SPH Church. Be sure to look at the videos that we have for you selected above. And again, with that, Bob's your uncle, cheerio. Until next lesson.